Greetings, saints. Happy Sabbath to everyone. I am so happy to be with you tonight. I praise God for another opportunity that we have that we can come together to study his word. It is a privilege that we can gather together, saints. We praise God for his mercy. We are thankful that the Lord was with us throughout the whole week. You know, you imagine we're going to work, we're driving every day, you know, accidents happening left and right. But the Lord has preserved our lives. That is a blessing, brothers and sisters. So we are thankful to each and every one of you watching tonight, wherever you are watching us from, uh, whichever platform that you are watching us from, we, we welcome you and we praise God for your presence. My name is Brother Mark Brenny with Out of the Cities Ministries. I'm extremely happy for um, our presentation tonight. So again, we welcome you. We ask at this time, if you know other people that may be interested, you could share um, this uh, live stream with them as we have a special guest tonight. So saints, once again, I praise God for the, for the opportunity to be together. And I thank you for joining us. We pray that the Lord will continue to bless you. And I specifically pray that tonight you'll be blessed by the presentation that you're going to um, see in a couple of minutes. Again, thank you for joining us. Welcome. Happy Sabbath. But before we get started, we're going to say a word of prayer. Let us let us pray together. Father in heaven, we are so thankful to you, O Lord, for many blessings. We are so thankful because you are good and you deserve to be praised. So, Father, we are coming to you at this time, thanking you for that which you have done for us. We thank you for your faithfulness towards us, though we are unfaithful. We praise your name, Father, for always being there. Now, as we come together to study, we pray that your spirit put your, his words in our mouths. Speak through us that the words that we speak may not be our own. And folks who are watching and who will be watching later on will be edified. We thank you. We praise your name. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Again, saints, welcome to everyone. Um, like I mentioned to you earlier, uh, we have a special guest with us tonight. Uh, we're, we're happy. We're um, happy to have our brother with us. Brother Samuel Tucker, we are extremely happy to have you with us tonight, brother. Brother, we want to say happy Sabbath to you. How are you doing? How's the family? How's everybody doing? No, yes, happy Sabbath. You know, it's, it's definitely, you know, good to be able to uh, reconnect uh, with you, brother. You know, I know the last time I believe we saw each other in person was, uh, I believe, 2017. Uh, so it's been, it's definitely been a little while. Uh, but things are going well. Uh, the family is good. You know, myself and my wife, uh, Erica. Uh, you haven't actually had uh, the privilege yet to uh, to meet my wife, but uh, Lord willing, hopefully, uh, hopefully. Yes. Soon. Yes. 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 I've seen. Yeah, I've yeah. seen pictures. I've seen pictures. Definitely. But uh, uh, yeah, one of these one of these days, Lord willing, we'll definitely yes, get yeah. to get together. Yes, brother. We we are extremely happy to have you with us tonight, and thank you for accepting our invite to come and be a blessing to uh to the haitian community tonight so brother we we are excited uh, to have you uh, with us yes. and we praise god for your presence brother so um 
we're just gonna go right into it. But before, if if you can, uh, um, if it's not much trouble, if you can kind of uh, tell the Haitian community a little bit about uh, your ministry, uh, Glad Tidings Ministries, tell us a little bit about that ministries and what you guys are doing and how you can be reached. Yeah, so uh, my name is Samuel Tucker, um, and uh, it's uh, with myself and my wife, uh, Eric Tucker. Uh, our ministry is called Glad Tidings 3 AM, Glad Tidings 3 AM. Uh, you can find us on YouTube. Uh, we post videos regularly. Uh, every week, uh, we post uh, different materials, you know, whether they be sermons, uh, whether they be uh, natural remedy demonstrations, you know, uh, lectures on uh, on family, health and wellness. Uh, and so uh, we're very active on social media, on our YouTube channel. Uh, we're on Facebook uh, as well. Uh, you can uh, uh, search of Glad Tiny's 3 AM. But we do the majority of our posting on uh, my personal page, uh, Samuel Tucker. Uh, you can find on uh, on Facebook. And there's a, a picture of me there. Uh, but we've been in ministry for um, for some time now, especially mm-hmm. since we've been married uh, going back to 2020. Uh, we've been in ministry, but by God's grace, we're actually we were able to become full time uh, starting uh, at the end of last year, starting at the end of last year. So that's definitely uh, been a blessing. But as far as a background uh, with myself, uh, I was born and raised in New Jersey. And so uh, essentially raised, uh, born and raised Adventist. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was, uh, you know, in New Jersey and, you know, raised you know, Adventist again. And in New Jersey, for those who don't know, uh, there is a, a very large uh, Haitian community in uh, New Jersey, uh, a lot of Haitian churches uh, in New Jersey. And, you know, in, in a past life, uh, I was um, a very avid musician. I was a drummer, you know, dabbled with the piano a little bit, but primarily I was a drummer and mm-hmm. uh, all of the, I guess you could say top flight uh, musicians were all Haitian, you know, and so I spent wow. a lot of time at, at <laughs> Yes, you know, I spent a lot of time at the uh, at the Haitian churches, and uh, you know, as we were talking earlier this week, you know, I was essentially Haitian by association. Yes, sir. And so, <laughs> you, know, you know, so uh, everybody, you know, um, everybody thought I was Haitian. You know, I mean, I love the the Haitian food and you know the Haitian culture. Yes, sir. You know, so I was you know fully ingratiated, you know, at that time, and so uh, especially having come into a you know a deeper knowledge, you know, of the truth, you know, certainly when I have opportunity. You know, I really tried to uh, minister, you know, to my uh, Haitian brethren. Uh, actually, back in uh, 2019, uh, there was a Haitian church in New Hampshire uh, that mm-hmm. we were able to do a, a winter revival uh, series for. And that was a tremendous blessing. And so um, that was, uh, you know, greatly appreciated. So uh, that was, you know, essentially my experience. Uh, I, I went to Oakwood. I, I don't know if how many of our fam- uh, listeners are familiar with Oakwood University down in Alabama. Uh, I went there to study theology. Uh, while I was there, as um, the Lord providentially orchestrated, you know, things, I was able to come into a knowledge of uh, really what present truth is. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, there are a lot of uh, persons down there. And, you know, this is when I was made aware of uh, such persons as, you know, Thomas Jackson or uh, Dwayne Lemon, um, mm-hmm. um, uh, Moses Mason. You know, um, unfortunately, you know, we know that he's he's passed. Yes. Uh, Jeremiah Davis, you know, other such persons. And so, uh, you know, the Lord uh, used these individuals, you know, to really help to give me an awakening and, you know, to really uh, to get more of an understanding as to what true gospel ministry is really Mm. supposed to look like and, you know, what it really means, you know, to minister to the souls uh, of men. And so uh, by God's grace, uh, I've been in ministry for uh, essentially 10 years now. Uh, When I left Oakwood, uh, I went to meet ministry. Uh, some mm-hmm. of our listeners may be familiar with Meet Ministry. Went there in 2014. I uh, went to the school. It was a tremendous experience. And uh, I worked there for about four years, four and a half years, give or take. And um, once I left Meet Ministry in 2018, you know, just continued, you know, Bible work, canvassing. And uh, by God's grace, has gotten us to the point uh, where we're uh, currently at now. And ultimately, you know, besides, you know, social media and, and creating, you know, different content, mm-hmm. uh, ultimately, we're seeking to establish an outpost, you know, so by God's Amen. grace, that's where I take focus uh is and so uh uh, using you know what we're doing now uh as a platform to eventually uh, build something more permanent amen praise god and uh 
currently um, you are located in not New Jersey. Yes. You're not li living in New Jersey anymore. No, no, not New Jersey anymore. So currently we're in uh, Pennsylvania. We're in okay. Pennsylvania. Yeah, currently in Pennsylvania. Uh, all right. So, Saints, um, those of you watching, um, if you want to get in contact with um, Brother Samuel and his ministries, um, you'll see a link in the uh, description of this video. So you can kind of, you can contact them. You know, if you would like to have them come on to your church, uh, do any type of presentation, because you did mention that you also do uh, presentation on natural remedies. I've seen a couple, your wife doing those kind of presentation. So if a church or somebody watching um, were to be interested in uh, having you folks come and do some type of presentation on um, natural remedies, they can do that. Is that correct? No, that is correct. So, you know, by God's grace, you know, we know that when Christ did ministry, it was much more than just preaching. Yes. You know, so the Bible is is clear in Matthew chapter four that Jesus, you know, he went all throughout Syria, you know, he's preaching, teaching and healing. And so uh, by God's grace, we really seek to have our ministry be very well rounded. So, um, you know, for instance, uh, Lord willing, in uh, May, uh, we're actually going to be going to uh, Phoenix, Arizona, uh, to do a uh, revival series for a church there. And, uh, you know, through the revival series, uh, my wife is actually going to be uh, holding a cooking class uh, mm -hmm. there as well. And so, uh, so yes, so uh, certainly if you are interested in having this, you know, at your church, uh, please contact us. Um, as, you know, Brother Mark mentioned, you know, the, the links, you know, will be in the description. And also as well, even if, um, you know, you're not able to uh, say necessarily do it at a church, you know, I know what, um, you know, certainly something that is a possibility as well. If, you know, say persons want to, you know, rent a hall or something mm -hmm. to that effect, you know, those are also possibilities as well. So um, even if you're not able to get it in the church venue, because, you know, as we know, you know, there can be, you know, you know, definitely difficulties with coordination and, you know, stuff like that, you know, when it comes to a church. So uh, certainly if you're not able to go that avenue, you know, you can, you know, you know rent out something and, you know, by God's grace, we can be able to minister to uh, the people in that locality. Yes, yes, indeed. You know, saints, let me say this. Um, I know there are Haitian churches all over the place. I mean, all over. So, saints, uh, if you're looking, uh, and 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 I'm not. What I'm about to say is in no way to be critical of our church. You know. But we understand uh, it's very unfortunate, but the meat in due season that we're in need of, especially in our Haitian churches, we know we're not really getting that every Saturday. That's, that's unfortunate. So uh, I'm very familiar with Brother Samuel's um, ministries. I'm very, very familiar with, with what they stand for, what they preach. Let me tell you, saints, if you are looking to have some straight present truth into your church listen you can contact me and i'll put you in contact um with brother samuel and his ministries because these are the type of messages especially in our community saints you know we need at this time saints this is what we need but unfortunately we know we're not getting it so if it, i would highly encourage uh, those of you watching uh, let's say uh, the church you go to, you have some type of influence. Maybe you're in charge of some type of uh, department and you want to do a program, whether it's based on family, because I know Brother Tucker is very big on that, um, how the devil is destroying our families in these last days, whether it's preparation for the last days, whether it's cooking, all of it. If you want that, please reach out. Uh, you can either reach out to him directly. Like I said, his information uh, will be down in the description of this video. You can contact them directly via YouTube or on social media, contact them, or you can contact us. Um, you'll see our information also on the screen uh, a little later. You can contact us and we'll, we'll put you in contact with 
Brother Samuel and his ministry. So, and, and I really vouch for them. I know the type of messages, messages that they're presenting. We need that in our community, brothers and sisters. We need that. All right, Brother Samuel, uh, I've already, I, I took too much time. <laughs> so I'm going to, well, at this time, uh, hand it over to you um, yeah. to share with the Haitian community what the Lord has placed upon your heart, brother. And if you do have questions, saints, you can put them in the chat, okay? And at the end of the uh, presentation, we'll entertain your question. So you can go ahead and stop, uh, start typing your question in the chat as you have them, and then we'll um, touch your questions later after the presentation. So, Brother Samuel, uh, yeah, I'll, head it, I'll, I'll hand it over to you. Um, go ahead and uh, share with us what the Lord has placed upon your heart, brother. Amen. Amen. Well, uh, before we begin, uh, let us have a word of prayer that God's spirit may be with us. Amen. Dear Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you so much for this wonderful Sabbath. Lord, despite whatever the week has been, we have this sacred time that you have carved out where we don't have to have our minds focused upon uh, the things of this world and not even the, the necessary things of this world. I pray, dear Lord, that you would uh, focus our attention uh, as we go through this uh, concise study, Lord, I just pray that you would give us understanding, uh, and I pray that you give us a heart to be obedient to what you communicate, dear Lord, and that we may have a desire uh, to share these things with others. And we pray all of this, and I pray to be with my mind as well, that you bring back to my remembrance everything that you have impressed upon my mind. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right. Good evening, uh, dear family. Uh, the study that we're going uh, to uh, go through is uh, entitled A Call to Restoration, or The Call to Restoration. Uh, and this particular uh, study is going to be dealing with the family. It's going to be dealing with the family. You know, uh, as Brother Mark and I were talking, you know, he was just mentioning, you know, in regards to uh, uh, the condition of our Haitian communities, and, you know, the things that are ravishing, you know, us as, as a people. And, you know, it's not just, you know, us as a Haitian community, but unfortunately what Satan is doing with all communities. And as we're going to see very clearly that everything begins in the home. Now, especially those of us who are tuning into uh, this particular telecast, who I'm pretty sure listen to out of the city's ministry or other, you know, types of ministries, you know, you're at least to some degree exposed to the fact that we're, we're living at the end of time. You know that uh, we are living, you know, in in on the threshold of great and solemn events. You know, so we have an understanding of that. Uh, but at the same time, there's there's a great need of practical instruction. Yes. Uh, you know, we were just at a place, um, uh, State Line SDA Church. I don't know how many of our listeners are familiar. And so uh, we were there, and um, they were uh, just doing a camp meeting on the family. Very powerful. And uh, one of the things that was being emphasized is that, especially at this time, uh, what God is desiring is not necessarily an effervescence of spirituality, but we need to do deep, solid, and earnest work as it pertains to our character building. Yes. And part of the reason why even those of us who have some understanding of the fact that we're living at the end of time, part of the reason why we tend to find it even difficult to be consistent Christians is because there's a lack of faithfulness to duty in our homes. And if we're really going to have this revival, if we're really going to be, you know, prepared for the latter rain, and if we're going to be able to do all of these things, you know, that we're, that the Lord is urging upon our consciences, we have to understand that the Reformation must begin in the home. Because if it doesn't start there, it's not going to be successful. That's right. It's not going to be successful. So in light of that, I'm going to uh, put up our PowerPoint slide. And I believe that this is being viewed. I believe that we can see this. Yes. All right. So currently on our screen, we have a picture of a man whose mind is being puppeted by a puppeteer or a puppet master. And this puppet master is using these strings 
in order to control the mind of the man. Now, as we go through this particular slide, all of this is laying a foundation. It's laying a foundation. Now, in light of that, let's turn in our Bibles to the book of Romans. Let's turn in our Bibles to the book of Romans. Let's turn in our Bibles to the book of Romans. We're going to turn to Romans chapter 6. We're going to turn to Romans chapter 6. Now, as we go through this study, I'm not going to be preaching. We're going to be studying and, Amen. and, 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 and teaching, and we're going to be seeking to really get a very strong understanding of what the Lord is trying to communicate to our minds. And again, if you have any questions, you know, by God's grace at the end, we'll be able to field. Um, so Romans chapter 6, starting verse 16, the Bible says, Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. Mm -hmm. Now, as we're going to, to find out that unfortunately, Satan has done an insanely masterful job in being able to control our minds as human beings. You know, we didn't put the quotation in this particular slide, but there's a statement either in first or second uh, uh, or the second volume of the book, Mind, Character and Personality. And it talks about how for centuries Satan has been been seeking to link the, the minds of us as human beings with his own mind. Yep. He has been seeking to link his mind with our mind. Now, in light of that, just to get an illustration, let's turn in our Bibles to the book of Daniel. Let's turn in our Bibles to the book of Daniel and let's let's get an illustration. Let's get an illustration of this. We're in the book of Daniel. We're in the book of Daniel. We're in Daniel chapter 10. We're going to start in verse 11. Daniel chapter 10, starting in verse 11. Notice what the Bible says. It says, And he said unto me, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak unto thee, and stand upright, for unto thee am I now sent. And when he had spoken this word unto me, I stood trembling. Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand, and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. Notice. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days. Mm -hmm. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, and I remained there with the king of Persia. Now, the reality is what the Bible is here describing is that, unfortunately, because of the demonic influences that were controlling the mind of the king of Persia, that Gabriel was not able to properly influence the mind of the king in right principles. And this is an illustration of what Satan is seeking to do with each and every one of our minds. Any time, uh, because the truth of the matter is the great controversy is always going on around us. And, it, and the great controversy is always going on as it pertains to our mind. Heavenly angels and demons are always wrestling for the supremacy of our decision making, wrestling for the supremacy of our decision making. But what we're going to do as we go through the slide here, as we see this man with his mind being controlled by. What we're going to see is is an evidence, sadly, in today's society of what Satan is doing in and, and the results of Satan's control over the human psyche. Now, notice, notice this. Now, we have a picture here of something called the LGBTQ. Now, unfortunately, this issue of the LGBTQ or the homosexual question mm -hmm. is a very hot button issue in today's society. And unfortunately, because of the general state of the church, whether whether some of our viewers are, are some of the Adventist or Baptist or whatever Christian persuasion you may be a part of, this homosexual question is unfortunately call, uh, causing a lot of devastation in the Christian church in general. Now, the Bible is very clear as it pertains to homosexuality. And we're actually going to read that. Let's turn in our Bibles to the book of 1 Corinthians. Now, I wouldn't be so naive uh, as to believe that maybe even some of our viewers may know some, uh, maybe even some family members who are part of the LGBTQ. And I know that, you know, especially in, you know, our Haitian culture, 
you know, um, you know, traditionally, you know, we've been very against, you know, the LGBTQ, but but a modern, uh, essentially, demonism is making inroads even in very uh, so-called traditional uh, uh, places, mm -hmm. and even issue is ravishing even our Haitian community. Now, in First Corinthians uh, chapter six, starting in verse, uh, we're going to start in verse nine. We're going to start in verse nine. Because again, I wouldn't even be surprised if even some of us listening to this particular broadcast have dealt with uh, homosexual tendencies or or proclivities. And the thing about it is, it doesn't matter what uh, end of the spectrum you may consider yourself to be on, though Satan has sought to uh, to to communicate this to you as your identity, the Lord in love is trying to give you your proper and true identity. Because we know that there is no condemnation in Christ Jesus. But notice what the Bible says. It says, know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Notice it says, be not deceived. Mm -hmm. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves or mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor extortioners uh, shall inherit the kingdom of God. Now, Especially when studying the word of God, you want to take it point by point by point. Now, why do you think it was necessary for the Apostle Paul, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, to clearly communicate that these type of persons actively practicing this wickedness are not going to inherit the kingdom of God? The reason being is because, again, especially in this day and age, we've come to a time where, especially in the church, there is this ideology that as long as a person professes the name of Christ, mm. that this is all that is needed in order for that person to be saved eternally in Christ's everlasting kingdom. But the Holy Spirit is making it very clear that if a person is practicing these things, that sadly, because we know that God does not delight in the destruction of the wicked, but sadly, the person actively practicing these things is not going to be in heaven. Mm. It doesn't matter what is said at their funeral. It doesn't matter, you know, if they were on the praise team. It doesn't matter what it is if they did not repent of their sins. And this principle is not just with homosexuality, but any sin that That's a right. person has not repented of. If they if they have died in that condition, sadly. Heaven will not be their home. It will not be their home. But going on, notice what this says as we uh, go back to our screen. This is taken from USA Today. It says Generation Z is driving force among adults identifying as LGBTQ poll show. Here's a breakdown. Notice this. Now, notice these statistics. I mean, this is startling. Hmm. This says percentages of those who identify as lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, or other. Now, we're going to start from the bottom, then we're going to work to the top. This says the silent generation, so 1.7 of that generation would uh, consider themselves a part of this community. Of the baby boomers, so that's a ge generally people who are around 65 is plus or older. Right. Um, 2.7. Generation X, 3.3. Millennials, so that's around our um, range, you know, persons, I believe, who are at this point, maybe around 25, 26 or older. Mm -hmm. So that's around 11%. But notice Generation Z. Hmm. Notice Generation Z. This says, according to this poll, almost 20%. Wow. 20% of Generation Z. And I don't remember the, the particular age, but I believe it's. Uh, around, I guess, like 23, 24 uh, going down. So tw so almost 20% of this um, uh, age range consider themselves to be a part of the LGBTQ community. I mean, that's startling. Yes. So essentially, at this rate, if the world were hypothetically to last for another 30, 40 years, the next generation what possibly almost 50 percent hmm. of the generation within about 30 years, almost 50 percent of that generation will be a part of the LGBTQ uh, community. I mean, we're literally living 
in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah. And uh -huh. it's so sad because so many of the people that are part of this community, they truly do not understand what they are being influenced by. And again, you know, we could go on and on about this subject, but Satan is truly trying to give man an identity that 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 it that intrinsically will corrupt him. Mm. And Satan is doing everything that he can to, in order to 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 mar the true identity that God wants to give us in Christ. All right. Next, we have on our screen. I don't know if any of our, our viewers may be familiar with this particular story. This actually uh, came out this uh, week. Uh, this woman on our screen is a 19 year old woman from Mississippi who was caught having sexual uh, intercourse with a dog. Yes, I did not um, um, mistake what hmm. I just said. This young 19 year old woman and, and we're going to find out in this article that this young woman. You know, it wasn't that she was just kissing the dog or, or fondling it. She was having, and, and pardon if we have any very young viewers, she was having very graphic sexual experiences with a dog. Notice this. Mississippi woman 19 filmed herself having sex with a male dog. Notice the article. A woman has been arrested after allegedly having sex with a dog and posting extremely graphic videos of the abuse on social media. This says police in Mississippi may have uh, say they were alerted to a video involving a woman and a male dog by a concerned resident who spotted it on social media. Notice what the law enforcement agent said. Notice in my 17 years in law enforcement, this is one of the most disturbing cases that I've ever investigated. He said the videos are so graphic that officers are not allowed, are not even allowed to discuss them. Mm. Fraser from the Hamlet of Merrick is being held in custody ahead of an appearance in court on Thursday. If found guilty, Fraser could be jailed for up to 10 years. Brothers and sisters, sadly, this is the society that we live in. And, and, and it's so important for us to understand is that what is taking place is not a new phenomenon. Let's right. turn in our Bibles to the book of Leviticus. Let's turn in our Bibles to the book of Leviticus. Leviticus chapter 18. Leviticus chapter 18. Notice what the Bible says in Leviticus chapter 18, starting in verse 19. Because the same condition of the world that we have now is the same condition of the world that has existed going back to antiquity. Mm -hmm. Every civilization that has collapsed has practiced these degrading forms of sexuality. And, and I say this in all love and kindness. I sincerely pray that this dear young woman, Denise Frazier, I pray that by God's grace, that her darkened mind can be reached with the gospel. Amen. Amen. Leviticus chapter 18, starting verse 19, the Bible says, Also thou shalt not approach unto a woman to uncover her nakedness, as long as she is put apart for her uncleanness. Moreover, thou shalt not lie carnally with thy neighbor's wife to defile thyself with her. And thou shalt not let any of thy seed pass through the fire to Molech. Neither shalt thou profane the name of thy God. I am the Lord. Notice, thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is abomination. That's homosexuality. Neither shalt thou lie with any beast to, thy, to defile thyself therewith. Neither shall any woman stand before a beast to lie down there too. It is confusion. Defile not ye yourselves in any of these things. Notice, for in all these the hmm. nations are defiled, which I cast out before you. So sadly, the same abominable practices that we see in this day and age are the same things that God has had to deal with ever since really sin has become prominent in this world because even starting with Cain when he went and and built the first city the world has ever seen his descendants were practicing these very same abominable things now going on we see on our screen a particular gentleman who is considered or who has the appellation of the Dalai Lama and I believe that some of our viewers may know where where, where mm -hmm. we're going with this yep 
This is taken from NPR. The Dalai Lama apologizes for asking a young boy to suck his tongue. And again, this is not a means to arbitrarily attack this man, but this is just reality. Many of these persons in these very high positions of power, they, sadly, these many of these men and women are, are actively involved in occult societies. And very many of these men and women are part of, of these esoteric occult organizations where pedophilia and bestiality are actively practiced. Because again, if this man was so was so uh, comfortable in asking a young boy to suck on his tongue in public, it would only be natural to think of what this man is doing in private. And it's mm -hmm. amazing, especially when you study the history of the Dalai Lama. He has a very intimate relationship with the CIA, but but we don't have time to get into that for this evening's study. All right, we're going to skip past this. Now, this is a particular woman. Now, remember, the reason why we're talking about all of these things, we're just giving an evidence of how Satan has been controlling yes. the human mind. You see, because it's just like what Christ told uh, to the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the religious leaders, that they were of their father, the devil. And the sad truth is that until a person has accepted the principles of the gospel into their life, that person is a child of Satan. They are a child of Satan. And this is for all of us. As long as we were in an unconverted state, we were children of Belial. Mm -hmm. And this is why we, 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 we must thank Jesus so much for what he has done to us. Or, or done for us. And yes, it is very true. Uh, it, the thought may come into the mind of some of our viewers. Well, there's many persons around the world that have never heard the name of Jesus. And yes, God understands this. And this is why Romans says that there are many of the heathen that have come into a knowledge of God, not necessarily by the preacher or reading the Bible, but through their intimate connection with nature, right. they have surrendered to the principles of God that the Lord has revealed to them through nature. But on our screen here, we have a woman. This is taken from the Associated Press. This says police union director fired after opioid smuggling arrest. Notice what this woman was doing in the position of power in which she had. This says the executive director for a Northern California police union who was charged with attempting to illegally import synthetic opioids from India and other countries has been fired from her job. Joanne Segovia, who is the executive director of the San Jose Police Officers Association, this says was arrested last week on charges she attempted to unlawfully import, import fentanyl. And fentanyl is one of the most dangerous, if not the most dangerous opioid. Now, notice how this woman was doing the smuggling. Hmm. Starting in 2015, Segovia had dozens of drug shipments mailed to her San Jose home from India, Hong Kong, and Hungary, and Singapore, with manifests listing their contents as wedding party favors, gift makeup, and chocolate sweets, and food supplement, according to a federal criminal complaint. And I mean, to think about it, especially with the position that she had, I'm pretty sure this woman was making well over $100,000 a year. Yep. So with this woman making a six-figure income, why in the world would she feel it necessary to literally be smuggling drugs from overseas into the United States? Hmm. Sadly, when the human heart is controlled by Satan, there is no telling where a human being will go. There is no telling. And this is why, friends, we cannot play with sin. And some person may say, well, you know, well, you know, I'm not, you know, doing crazy worldliness. I'm not drinking. I'm not smoking. But if you're living in in active violation of any command of the Lord and you hold on to that, there is no telling where Satan will tell you, uh, take you. Because think about this. Do you do we think that David ever thought that he would eventually end up committing adultery and killing another woman's husband? Mm. 
Do we think that Solomon ever thought that he would have a multiplicity of wives and even get to the point where he was practicing homosexuality and pedophilia? Nope. He never thought that. Nope. But unfortunately, they kept tampering with sin to the point where Satan had complete control of them. Now, going on, we here have a picture, a picture of the Russian flag. Now, we know as the United States that there is currently a war taking place in the Ukraine between uh, Russia and the Ukraine. And we have been told on our media outlets that Russia is the bad guy. Now, don't get me wrong. Russia, um, just like every other country around the world, has great e evils contained in that nation. But the unfortunate reality is, is that the, the accounts that we're being given of this crisis are not true. And again, the reason why we're bringing this out is to give an illustration that from top to bottom, whether it is in the area of sexuality, mm -hmm. whether it is in the area of politics, whether it's in the area of geopolitics, that Satan has control of the minds and hearts of men. Now, on our screen, we have a picture of a man by the name of Anthony C. Something. He was a brilliant historian and researcher. Notice what the man says in a book that he wrote called Wall Street and the Bolshevik Revolution. Notice Russia was then, as it is today, the largest untapped market in the world. We don't have time to get into the details, but the reason why this war is going on is for the sake of financial profit. It's not because the United States is trying to liberate the Ukrainian people. It's simply for financial profit. Moreover, Russia then and now constituted the greatest potential competitive threat to American notice. And notice we highlighted these words in green. Mm -hmm. American industrial and financial supremacy at the bottom. Wall Street must have cold shivers when it visualizes Russia as a second super American industrial giant. The Bible told us centuries ago in first Timothy chapter six, that the love of money yes. is the root of all evil, the root of all evil. All right. We're going to bring this uh, to a head on our screen here. Let's turn in our Bibles. As we see this, let's turn in our Bibles to the book of first Timothy. Let's turn in our Bibles to the book of first Timothy. Let's turn in our Bibles to the book of 1 Timothy. Actually, 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy. The Bible is, is, is a treasure trove. Yes, sir. Indeed. Indeed, wisdom. brother. All right. Actually, 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy. 1 Timothy is good, too, but we're going to turn to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy, we're going to start in chapter 3, and, I, and I'm pretty sure we're familiar with some of these uh, with some of these verses. 2 Timothy chapter 3, starting in verse 1. Notice what the mm -hmm. Bible says. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. I wonder where, if we're in those times. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful. Mm -hmm. Without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, notice, lovers of pleasures, more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. Now, what we want to focus in on is the fact that, yes, this has an application to the world, but primarily... This has the greatest application to the church. Amen. The reason why these, these characteristics are a sign of the last days is not because these things are going to be prevalent in the world, because these abominable wickednesses have always been in the world. Yes. But the reason why this is such a sign of the last days is because the church which is supposed to be a shining beacon in the world, has become a habitation of devils. Yes. Now, as we look at our screen, some of us, you know, in looking at this, just the aesthetic, we may think that maybe this is another satanic performance at the Grammys or the VMAs mm -hmm. or, 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 the, or MTV Music Awards or whatever may have you. 
but this was actually a performance at a Christian church mm. called Transformation Church, whose lead pastor is a man by the name of Michael Todd. Mm. This is the Easter service that just took place this past Sunday. And, wow. and the, I mean, the it's, it looks so demonic. Yes. And literally you have at the back of it, a woman who's on a cross. It has all of the demonic satanic imagery. And, and sadly there were even some many, not even just some, but many professed Christians defending this wickedness, mm. Mm. literally, saying that people were bring that people were being brought to Christ wow as a result of this blasphemy i mean it is so it, it's really and i don't even say this to be inflammatory but it is almost not not almost but it's psychotic how deceived we have become as christians mm -hmm. that we will literally defend anything that has the name christian before it Oh, man. This is taken from Charisma News, the shocking transformation of Michael Todd's Easter service. We're not going to go through the details of this article for the sake of time. Mm -hmm. At the very bottom, this says, notice, actually, we're going to start at the top. It says, in a Facebook video, Todd shared the purpose behind the play before the production began. He said that in 2015, after becoming the pastor of the church, he said that he had never preached an Easter sermon. He envisioned that the play should speak to the lost instead of just to those who already were saved, mm. saying that he wanted to go to the edge and do everything short of sin mm. with the play. The man is literally saying that we wanted to be as demonic as we possibly could be mm. without actually being demonic. Right. I, right. Mean, I mean, think about it. Did Jesus have to do this in order to bring the multitudes no, to himself? No, no. Did did Jesus have to act like he like he was a a a bell worshipper in the groves in order to bring the multitudes to himself? No. L literally, exactly. This is literally what Jehu did. Yes. Jehu at one time, and I don't know if our if our listeners are familiar with Jehu, God raised up jehu to do a work for him but sadly the bible says that jehu did the work of god deceitfully yes and jehu said he uh, at one time said that you know i'm a worshiper of baal and if you mm -hmm. really want to the baal we're going to have a big party at seven o'clock at such and such a date and so all of the worshipers of Baal came you know in order to have a big old orgy and do all these things and when they came, Jehu locked the doors and he killed yep. everybody in the place. Even though the worshipers of the devil were slain, he did it deceitfully. Yes. He did it deceitfully. Notice what this goes on to say. Today, with an amazing team under the direction of some amazing people, I believe for the first time we're going to get to see this production with the notice with the level of anointing mm. and excellence that I saw in it when I didn't have the resources to be able to present it. So this man literally is under the delusion that the anointing of the Holy Spirit was on this. But sadly, this man does not realize that Satan, mm. along mm. with demons, were mingling their energy in that performance. Now, this is a particular preacher. I don't know if any of our uh, listeners are familiar with him, a man by the name of Charles Spurgeon. Mm -hmm. This man was, was so filled with the spirit, uh, he was called the Prince of Preachers. Notice what the man said. A time will come when instead of shepherds feeding the sheep, the church will have clowns entertaining the goats. Wow, wow, wow. And Sadly, we have literally come to a time where instead of having faithful shepherds feeding the flock of God, we have nothing but clowns entertaining the goats. Mm. And the last time I checked, my Bible says that the goats are not going to heaven. No. Notice what uh, this says in Great Controversy. And again, this is this is not a means to condemn Michael Todd, I pray that by God's grace, 
this man can come to repentance. But sadly, this man, even possibly unknowingly to himself in its full magnitude, is leading people to hell. And I and I sincerely pray that God have mercy upon yes. his soul. Yes. This says already the doctrine that men are released from obedience to God's requirements has weakened the force of moral obligation and opened the floodgates of iniquity upon the world. Lawlessness, dissipation, and corruption are sweeping in upon us like an overwhelming tide. In the family, Satan is at work. His banner waves even in professedly Christian households. Mm. There is envy, evil surmising, hypocrisy, estrangement, emulation, strife, betrayal of sacred trust, indulgence of lust. The whole system of religious principles and doctrines, which should form the foundation and framework of social life, seems to be a tottering mass ready to fall to ruin. And in light of that, we have a picture of the home. I wonder what the home has to do, has to deal with everything that we have just talked about. Mm. Notice this is taken from the ministry of healing, the restoration and uplifting of and the uplifting of humanity begins in the home. Amen. The work of parents notice for those of us who are parents, please pay special and close attention. The work of parents underlies any of every other, not the pastor, not the politician, not the bishop, not anyone, the parent. Society is composed of families and is what the heads of families make it. Out of the heart are the issues of life. Actually, let's turn to that. Let's turn to Proverbs chapter 4. Let's turn to Proverbs chapter 4, and we're going to start in verse 23. Proverbs chapter 4, starting in verse 23. Notice this biblical principle. Verse 23, the Bible says, keep thy heart with all diligence. Mm -hmm. You see, the heart of, of, of the world is literally the home. For out of it are the issues of life. So those of us who are parents, even if we're not parents, if we have husband and wife, even if we're children, we need to do everything that we can to preserve the, 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 the principles of God in our homes. Notice at the bottom of the statement. It says the well-being of society, the success of the church, the prosperity of the nation depend on home influences. Mm. The reason why there's so much turmoil in America, in Russia, in Bangladesh, in Indonesia, in China is because there has been a degradation in the home. Yes. But notice this, notice this principle. Now we have on our screen... We have a symbol of the children of Israel. I wonder what the experience of the children of Israel, what uh, bearing does that have upon us in our homes here in these last days? Let's turn in our Bibles to the book of 1 Corinthians. Let's turn in our Bibles to the book of 1 Corinthians. Let's turn in our Bibles to the book of 1 Corinthians. We're actually going to close on this slide. Let's turn our Bibles to the book of 1 Corinthians, but we're going to extrapolate some principles. We're going to end on some really practical points, some yes. very practical, practical points. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, and we're going to start in verse 11. Notice what the Bible says. Actually, for, for the sake of context, uh, we're going to start in verse 4. We're going to take our time a little bit. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It says, and did all drink the same spiritual drink for they drink of that spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was Christ. Amen. But with many of them, God was not well pleased for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Notice why they were overthrown. Now, these things were our examples to the intent. We should not lust after evil things. As they also lusted. Now, let's notice what these evil things were. Neither be ye idolaters, mm. as were some of them, as it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. 
neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day, just one day, three and 20,000. Neither let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents. Neither murmur ye as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. Notice verse 11. Now all these things happened unto them for in samples. samples. Yes. They are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. Now, even though we know that in context that Paul was, was writing to the believers in Corinth, but there's a statement in the spirit of prophecy where inspiration says that the Bible writers actually wrote more for our time than for their time. Mm -hmm. Reality is, is that truly Paul was, was primarily speaking for us, that the experience of the children of Israel, that this has been left on record primarily for those of us living at this particular epoch of the world's history. Now, in light of that, we're going to see this because we want to know intelligently how did the children of Israel fall into all of these grossities of apostasy? I wonder if it has anything to do with the homes of the mm. Israelites. Notice this. Wherever in Israel God's plan of education was carried into effect, its results testified of its author. I wish we had so much time to just talk about education. Mm. It says, but in very many households, the training appointed by heaven and the characters thus developed were alike rare. God's plan was but partially and imperfectly fulfilled. And this is one of our great problems at this time. Even for those of us who may be conscientious in regard, you know, to a greater or less degree, we're, we're but partially and mm. imperfectly following God's plan we're not fully following it no we're, we're following a, a principle here and a principle there but we're not really taking the totality of what God has said and applying it to our homes notice by unbelief and by disregard of the Lord's directions the Israelites surrounded themselves with temptations that few had power to resist mm. Their settlement in Canaan, and it quotes Psalms 106, 34 through 36. Actually, let's turn to that. Psalms chapter 106. Let's turn to Psalms chapter 106. Let's turn to Psalms chapter 106. You know, and it's interesting, the spirit of prophecy actually uh, encourages us very strongly that we should read Psalms 105 and 106 at least once every week. At least once every week. Psalms chapter 105, starting in verse 34, notice what the Bible says. It says, they did not destroy the nations concerning whom the Lord commanded them, mm -hmm. but were mingled among the heathen and learned their works. And they served their idols, which were a snare unto them. Mm. Now, some person may be saying, well, you know, we don't literally bow down and worship idols. But the thing about it is, especially if we have that television in our home, watching things we know that we should not be watching, putting it in front of our children, we're literally making our children bow down and worship idols. If we are allowing our children to have an education by the world, if we are still sending them to public school, and, and I would even say, even if we're sending them to even many so-called, I should say, hmm so-called Christian schools, I wonder if we're still giving them idolatry. I wonder. You see, this is why, you know, my wife and I, we've been going through um, child guidance. And especially when you really go through these types of volumes and really start to gain an understanding of how serious it is to raise children. Yes. yes. It is not a game. And I... I sincerely pray for those of us who are parents. We need to pray that the Lord will help us mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. stop playing games if we have been and get serious about our responsibilities. Notice, this says in education, 
fathers and mothers in Israel became indifferent to mm. their obligation to God, indifferent to their obligation to their children. Through unfaithfulness in the home and idolatrous influences without, many of the Hebrew youth received an education differing widely from that which God had planned for them. Mm. They learned the ways of the heathen. So one of the primary reasons, if not the primary reason why Israel kept falling into apostasy was because the parents stopped raising their children in the admonition of the Lord. Actually, in light of that, let's turn in our Bibles to the book of Joshua. Let's turn, actually, let's turn to Judges. Let's turn to Judges. Let's turn in our Bibles to the book of Judges. Let's turn in our book, Bibles to the book of Judges, chapter 2, where we're going to start in verse 6. Judges chapter 2, starting verse 6. Notice what the Bible says. It says, And when Joshua had let the people go, the children of Israel went every man unto his inheritance to possess the land. And the people served the Lord all the days of Joshua and all the days of the elders that outlived Joshua, who had seen all the great works of the Lord that he did for Israel. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the son of the Lord, died being an hundred and ten years old, long, faithful life. Mm -hmm. And they buried him in the border of the inheritance of the timnath Herez, in the Mount of Ephraim, on the, side, on the north side of the hill Gaash. And also all that generation were gathered unto their fathers. Notice, and there arose another mm -hmm. generation after them which knew not the Lord, nor yet the works which he had done for Israel. Mm. Now, the question has to be asked, why didn't this generation know the works of the Lord? And simply, as we've seen clearly from the Bible and spirit of prophecy, unfaithful parents, because the parents were unfaithful in yes. the training of their children. Mm, mm, mm. You see, Dear friends, and as we see this as it pertains to us, you know, because and I'm pretty sure, you know, uh, you know, we, we've heard this all the time. You know, my wife and get I'm pretty sure um, uh, many persons, you know, ask you this as well, Brother Mark. You know, can you please talk to my son or daughter? They've been raised in the church, but they want nothing to do with to God do anymore. with the church. Yeah. Yeah. They want nothing to do with it. Notice this on our screen here. We have a picture of a recording artist by the name of Bad Bunny. Bad Bunny. This is his stage name. And uh, this particular artist, I'm pretty sure many of the young persons know who this is. This is now considered the most popular uh, recording artist in the world today. In the world today. Hmm. And many of our young people are following after the ways of the world. And the question is, why are they doing this? Why are they doing this? Notice this as we bring this to a close. Part of it, not the whole reason, but part of it, we're going to get practical. Part of it is because of something here. It is because of the poison of gossip. I wonder what gossip has to do with our children abandoning Christ mm. to serve Satan. I wonder. Let's turn our Bibles to the book of Proverbs. Back to Proverbs. Let's turn our Bibles to the book of Proverbs chapter 20. Let's turn our Bibles to the book of Proverbs chapter 20. We're going to start in verse 19. Proverbs chapter 20, starting in verse 19. The Bible says, He that goeth about as a talebearer revealeth secrets. Therefore meddle not with him that flattereth with his lips. Mm. Proverbs chapter 11. Let's turn to uh, chapter 11. In verse 13, notice what the Bible says again. A talebearer revealeth secrets, but he that is of a faithful spirit concealeth the, the matter. matter. Amen. Notice what Christ Object Lessons has to say in commenting upon this principle. Many who listen to the preaching of the word of God make it the subject of criticism at home. Mm. They sit in judgment on the sermon as they would on the words of a lecturer or a political speaker. 
the message that should be regarded as the word of the Lord to them is dwelt upon with trifling or sarcastic comment. Mm. Minister's character, motives, and actions, and the conduct of the fellow members of the church are freely discussed. Severe judgment is pronounced, gossip or slander repeated, and this in the hearing of the unconverted. Often these things are spoken by parents in the hearing of their children. Mm. Thus are destroyed respect for God's messengers and reverence for their message. And many are taught to regard lightly God's word itself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And this has to be purposed. Even if a minister is literally speaking for Satan himself, we have to be careful of how we communicate this, especially around, um, around those who are inexperienced and especially around the youth. Notice what this goes on to say. Thus, in the homes of professed Christians, many youth are educated to be wow. infidel. Wow. I'll read it again. Thus, in the homes of professed Christians, many youth are educated to be infidels. And the parents question why mm. their children are so little interested in mm. the gospel and so ready to doubt the truth of the Bible. They wonder that it is so difficult to reach them with moral and religious influences. Notice, so these parents are not, you know, they're not necessarily hypocrites. They're not necessarily, you know, profligate worldlings and doing right. and, go, and going right. crazy. They desire spirituality in their home. Right. But sadly, they've been poisoned mm. with this demon of gossip and slander. It says they do not see that their own example has hardened the hearts of their children. Mm. The good seed finds no place to take root and Satan catches it away. So as we have come to the end of our study, my appeal is just very simple, especially for those of us who are parents. Even if this testimony of gossip and slander has not been our experience we need to pray for renewed consecration yes. that we be faithful in the raising of our children. For those of us who are young people who may be watching this telecast and you realize that your parents to a greater or less degree have failed in their raising and training of you, forgive them. Pray that the Lord will give you the grace and strength to forgive them. Right. But by God's grace, do not allow that. Do not allow Satan to use that as a means to keep you from Christ. Because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how much of a hypocrite our parents might have been. God is going to ask us individually, what did you do with the message that I gave you? I know your parents were hypocrites. I know you did not have the best religious influence in your home, but I still gave you opportunity to know me as your personal savior. Amen. And you did not take advantage of that opportunity. So upon this Sabbath, as we go through this uh, sacred time, let us let us let us pray that the Lord will help us to be faithful in whatever position we're in, whether we're husband, wife, child, whether we're single. Let's pray that the Lord will help us to be faithful in the position that we are in. And in light of that, let us have a word of prayer. Dear Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you so much for what you have communicated. Lord, we see the practicality of what we need. If anything, Lord, I just pray that you would help us to keep a guard over our mouths. Lord, the Bible tells us in the book of Ephesians chapter 4 that we should let no corrupt communication proceed out of our mouth, but only that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And we know, as the Bible says in Titus chapter 2, that grace is a teacher to help us overcome sin. So I just pray that our words may be seasoned with grace, that it may help others to overcome as, as, as you overcame. And we pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you for the pre presentation, brother. Thank you. Praise God. 
we have some questions um yes, like where yes. um we, we kind of uh, mentioned that earlier anybody that has any uh, question for our brother samuel tucker uh, please go ahead and place them in the chat. All right. So we got some questions. The first one is, um, brother, you mentioned uh, earlier that you, you used to be a musician. Um, yes, that is correct. Yes. In the church, you used to, uh, you see, you say you used to play the drum, right? I did. Okay. I did. So the question is, uh, can that then be used to keep the youth in the church, the music? Can we, uh, yeah. can we use that? Like, um, yeah. d- does that make sense? Can we use that? Because oh, we see that the youth are leaving. So yeah. can that be yeah. a vehicle to, to, yeah. um, to keep them in? No, I mean, th- this is a very good question. And, and certainly, you know, music is always a hot button issue that people love to, uh, mm-hmm. first of all, to talk about. Uh, with music, you know, this is not to be confused. Um, God desires very good music in his church. Yes. You know, because certainly, you know, we, we certainly don't want to, you know, take the extreme as far as, you know, that God doesn't desire very good music. And he really does, you know, because, you know, sometimes, you know, when this, you know, music question is talked about, you know, and persons who are, you know, seeking to be sincere and, you know, and to shed light on, you know, the, the demonicism of, of bad music. You know, we, we tend to advocate music that is not really filled with the spirit. So a lot of times, even when we're singing hymns or whatever may have you, uh, as we sing them, uh, it gives evidence that we really don't have an experience in the music that we're singing. So we don't really sing it with life. And so uh, that that's, you know, definitely a point to be mentioned. But uh, the truth of the matter is music is merely to be uh, an icing on the cake as it pertains to spiritual worship. You know, the, uh, Jesus made it very clear that God wants people to worship him in spirit and in truth. That's right. Uh, I t- uh, turn to it, but you can read that in John chapter four. But uh, so God wants us to worship him in spirit and in truth. So, you know, to give you a backdrop. So especially being a musician, you know, before I knew any better, you know, I, I took music very seriously. And by God's mm-hmm. grace, you know, I'm, you know, seeking to, to learn the piano, um, you know, again. But, um, I, you know, I took music very seriously, you know, as any, you know, you know, real musician does. And so, you know, it was something that, you know, um, I practiced, you know, um, you know, music and, you know, probably sports, you know, that was the two main things. And don't get me wrong. Uh, I love church, you know, my, my world revolved, you know, around church, you know, so I love going to church. You know, I, I never had the testimony that I, you know, quote unquote, you know, went into the world, you know, mm-hmm. or anything, even though I you know, whirling, in, you know, in, in many of my practices, but, uh, but, um, I love being at church, but, you know, the issue was, especially, you know, when we had the praise and worship music and stuff like that, you know, if a church didn't have that music, you know, we mm-hmm. considered church boring. Mm-hmm. You know, so if the, if the music wasn't bumping, then church was boring. Uh, and to, and to think that, that we really, are only going to church to listen to music. Mm. You know, and I and I would, you know, we mentioned this in sermons that, you know, I would have, you know, musician friends who would literally tell me, and, I, and again, I want to emphasize, these is, you know, especially Haitian musician friends that I had were incredibly talented. Mm-hmm. I mean, incre- I mean, incredibly talented, you know, talented enough that they could have been playing for, you know, Jay-Z or, you know, any of the, you know, worldly, you know, musicians, I mean, incredibly talented. And they would tell me that part of the reason why they're, you know, in the church is because of them, you know, because of the fact that they play drums or, or they play bass or they play organ mm. or, you know, or they're on keys or what, or whatever may have you. This was like the only reason why they were, you know, essentially in church, you know, why they hadn't take, taken the step to not be at church. And, you know, we've made mention, you know, before, you know, is Christ so unattractive that the mm. only reason why we're not serving Satan is because of an instrument. Mm. Mm. I mean, that, 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 that just doesn't make any sense, you know? So, 
at the end of the day, you know, if we really want to bring people to the Lord, we have to use the methods that Christ used. That's right. Yes, music has a important place in the service of God, especially, you know, when you're doing like an evangelistic campaign and stuff like that, when you can have good music. And I mean, you know, people who can really sing, who know how to, you know, lead out in congregational music. And you have, you know, people who are very talented on maybe the piano or whatever, you know, uh, you know, instrument. And, you know, people who can really sing to the glory of God, you know, having good sacred music really adds to the power of 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 of, of reaching souls. Yes. So there is a place for music. There is a place for it. But it's to never supersede the importance and centrality of the of the word of God. That's right. That's right. And, you know, if I may add, um, you mentioned that we need to be using Christ's method. This is so important because, you see, every church is everybody realize that um, uh, the young people do not stand they're leaving. So people are yeah. having, you know, focus groups and, and to see, well, it's kind of like in the world, if something doesn't work, people are, if you, let's say you have a product and people used to buy it and they're not buying it anymore. So you're going to do some type of survey, you know, ask questions. Well, what would you like? See, this is, I think where we go wrong is when we're trying to now cater to the kind of mind of the youth, not to say that all of them are carnal, none of them are converted. We're not saying that. But once we start to cater to the carnal mind, thinking by doing that, we'll keep them. I think that's when we start to uh, uh, go on a dangerous, uh, a very dangerous path. Because what's going to happen is you mentioned earlier that then when they go to a church, they don't have that music. They'll say, well, it's boring. What that's also going to lead to is if I'm in the church, the type of music that I get in the church is very similar to the type of music in the world. Well, if I can get it in the church and I can get it in the world, I might as well just get it in the world. You got what I'm saying? So we, we actually oh, yeah. leading our young people away. You know, there's this thing that we say, especially in our community, uh, we have the mindset, if we give them truth, if they, if we give them Bible, they won't like it. That's actually not the case. They want to see truth being preached. They want to see truth being practiced. You know, we don't want to be hypocrites. We don't want to be doing gossiping. You talked about that earlier. All of these things is causing confuse, confusion in the mind of our young people. Okay. You know, go ahead. And yeah, I have another you know, questions after that. Go ahead. No. Yes. You know, even to piggyback off of that, um, I'll give an example. So when I started having my experience with, with the Lord, I was around 14, 15 years old. And the Lord started to do a transformation on my heart. And mm -hmm. as this, you know, started to take place, you know, as the Lord was, you know, changing my desires and aspirations and all this, I knew that I had to stop listening to, you know, rap music and, 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 and all of those things, you know, it was nobody that came to me, you know, you know, it wasn't, you know, an elder telling me you need to stop listening to these things or whatever may mm -hmm. have you as the Holy spirit was working on my heart. I just knew that how in the world can I claim to be a Christian and still, you know, at the time, listen to 50 cent, mm. listen to JC. I, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's ludicrous. Right. Um, and, you know, with that being said, you know, and this is just the work of the Holy Spirit. So as I'm going through this, but mind you, I'm still, you know, I'm a musician, I'm drumming, I'm, you know, and mind you, I'm exclusively listening to quote unquote gospel music, mm -hmm. you know, so, you know, I'm listening to, you know, Fred Hammond and Marvin Sapp and Donnie mm -hmm. McClurkin and mm -hmm. all of these you know, gospel artists. I'm pretty sure some of us are familiar. Mm -hmm. So I'm listening to all of them, but mind you. I'm unaware of the fact that modern gospel music has its origins in jazz mm -hmm. and all modern forms of music, whether it be rock music, hip hop, a, a heavy metal, mm -hmm. a, a punk, pop, all, all genres have their roots in jazz, all of them. 
literally mm. all of them. And so, you know, just to give a quick history, uh, there was a man by the name of Thomas Dorsey who lived around the turn of the 20th century. And this gentleman um, is considered the, the, the father of modern gospel music. And he fused uh, jazz with Christian lyrics. And that helped to birth what mm. we consider to be gospel music. So as I'm, you know, drumming and doing all of this, because the beats and rhythms and all, all and the gospel music that I'm listening to is very similar to some R&B music and some hip hop, I started to listen again to certain hip hop oh. and, and, and uh, jazz and, and those type of things. And mind you, the songs that I was listening to, they weren't like overtly demonic or whatever may have you. They had like a good feel to it. You know, the message wasn't like terrible, quote unquote. Um, but because there were so many similarities between the gospel and the R&B uh, selections that I was listening to, I didn't feel, you know, convicted, you know, again, you know, feeling convicted, you know, I didn't feel convicted that what I was doing was wrong. Yes, yes, yes. Wow. I'll tell you, but you know, based on what you just said, brother, if we are sincere God will talk to you. God will use his spirit to impress upon your mind the truth that you need. All right. So the next question would be, uh, you kind of touched on this a little bit, entertainment in the church. Uh, I guess the person who wants you to talk a little bit, uh, touch that a little bit more, the, the idea that, we need to entertain the people, you know, whether it's drama yeah. or invite uh, maybe those on the outside who may not be at SDA, bring them in so they can kind of entertain our people. Uh, yeah. Speak on that a little bit, brother, please. You know, I, I would say, um, well, actually, let's let's do this. Let's mm -hmm. let's open up our box very quickly. And let's uh, turn to, give me one second. Quietness. Let's turn to Isaiah chapter 32. Right. Let's turn to Isaiah chapter 32. And we're going to read in verse 17. You see, a another part that must be considered, you know, we live in a generation that hates reading. Yes. I mean, absolutely hates it. Yes. Categorically. And, you know, personally for me as a testimony, I grew up hating reading. I hated it with a passion. Hmm. Um, I mean, and, and it wasn't that I was, you know, intellectually uh, stupid, um, but because of circumstances and especially because of, you know, the modern educational system, I never had, uh, you know, strong proclivities to really uh, exert myself intellectually. Right. You know, but by God's grace, once I, you know, once the Lord transformed my heart, you know, he put inside of me a love for knowledge and development and intellectual culture and all those things. Amen. But the reason why I'm uh, saying this is because, Part of the reason why there's such a manifest disdain for, you know, for reading and all these things is because our nervous systems are too excited. Mm -hmm. Because of the entertainment that we're partaking of, because of the music we're listening to, because of all these things, it's over exciting our central nervous system to the point where it makes it excruciatingly difficult to actually enjoy the tranquil joys of studying the word of God and spending time with him. So notice uh, Isaiah chapter 32 and verse 17 it says, and the work of righteousness shall be peace and the effect of righteousness, quietness and assurance forever. You see, when the Holy Spirit tr is truly manifest in a person's life, mm -hmm. when the Holy Spirit is truly manifest at a um, at an event at a church, whatever may have you. The Holy Spirit will manifest Himself in this peace and in this quietness. 
loud noise and all of those different type of things has never been intrinsically associated with the worship of God. And certainly when we go back and look at the Old Testament, you know, we see, you know, the um, the the ritual service of the ancient Hebrews. Mm -hmm. Yes, there was a time where trumpets were used and all of these different type of things, you know, like, you know, you had the Feast of Trumpets and, and things of that nature. But especially when when it came to the solemn services of like the Day of Atonement and, and all of these different type of events, it was to be characterized by deep solemnity. Yes. Because God primarily wanted the intellectual and spiritual nature of his people to be predominant as opposed to their emotions. Yes. Because when you're seeking to cooperate with God to overcome sin, it is a greatly intellectual and spiritual endeavor. Mm -hmm. The emotions are there, but it's primarily intellectual and spiritual. Yes, sir. And so as it pertains to that, now don't get me wrong, you know, when the word entertainment does not mean the Avengers. The word entertainment, you know, does not mean, uh, you know, the roller skating rink, you know, where women are, you know, gyrating and, and things of that nature. Mm hmm um, a form of entertainment is when a family gets together on a Sabbath evening and and they uh, say do a puzzle together of Noah's Ark. That's entertainment. Mm -hmm. You see, so our concepts of entertainment need to be transformed because entertainment in itself is not intrinsically bad or good. It just depends on what form of entertainment you're engaging in. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, now, mm -hmm. as it pertains to the word of God, again, we don't go to church to be entertained. No. And unfortunately, you know, we even mentioned this as well. And I'm pretty sure you've seen it as well, brother. Like a lot of times, even when people are listening to present truth, we view it as spiritual entertainment hmm. as opposed to something we need to be applying to our lives and opening the word of God, studying for ourselves. We kind of just open up YouTube, put on the sermon and literally get out the popcorn hmm, hmm. and 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 listen to the minister as if we were you know watching you know um uh, uh messi on the pitch mm -hmm. as if we were watching ronaldo on the pitch you know so it's our understanding of of things needs needs to be transformed and and again you know actually let's turn to it not to believe the point but let's turn to to matthew let's turn to matthew chapter 4 Mm -hmm. Let's turn to Matthew chapter four. Let's turn to Matthew chapter four, and we're going to start in verse 23. Matthew chapter four and verse 23. The Bible says, and Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. Notice 24 and his fame went throughout all Syria. So he was famous. And they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with divers diseases and torments, and those which were possessed with devils, and those which were lunatic, and those that had the palsy, and he healed them. So these were the method methods that Jesus used in order to bring the multitudes. Now, mind you, the purpose of Christ doing this was not to be famous. Right. But by default, when you follow God's principles, it's going to bring you a lot of attention. Mm -hmm. It's going to bring you a lot mm -hmm. of attention. And unfortunately, the reason why we're finding it difficult to retain our young people is because we're not following God's principles. Remember, this needs to be understood. I just turned 30 years old. And it's really it's it's really a solemn thought to think that Jesus was literally my age hmm. when he started his ministry. When the divine son of God started his ministry, he was only 30 years old. Jesus was not 60 when he was on this earth. No. Jesus was a young man. He was a young person. So if that young person, being the divine son of God, did not need to get, you know, Pontius Pilate and Caesar Augustus 
you know, in order to bring down to the Sermon on the Mount, in order to make people come and, and watch him, we certainly don't need to, to be doing that today. Amen. Amen. Well said, brother. All right. Next question. And by the way, Saints, if you just joined us, if you have a question, go ahead, put it in the chat and we'll talk about it. Next question is, I have a friend who said that uh, when she does do church online, church at home, she follows Sunday church, particularly Pastor Todd, which I think is the one that you uh, yeah. you mentioned, yeah. not Saturday church. So yeah. I'm, I'm getting from this question that this person is an SDA. Yeah. But when they do yeah. church at home, they follow Sunday churches, Todd. more specifically Pastor Todd. She said she likes their service better. What advice can I give my friend? And there's a second part to the question. So let's finish with yeah. that. And then I'll, we'll talk about the second part. Um, you know, the Bible tells us in Hebrews that we should not forsake the assembling of ourselves together. Yes. You know, as we see the day approaching. So um, as far as possible, we want to congregate with believers. You know, even if you go back to the time of the early Christians, you know, when they were under, you know, heavy persecution, you look, you think about the Christians during the Middle Ages, uh, even when they were under heavy persecution from the Papal Inquisition and, mm -hmm. and all of those different forces, they still as much as possible sought to meet together in groups because there's there's power when yes. believers come together. There's spiritual power. There's literally certain spiritual blessings we can only receive by being with other uh, believers. So, you know, that's on that. But as it pertains to Michael Todd, I will say this, and this is something that, you know, we seek to communicate. It really does have to be understood that there are many things that these men and women communicate that that is very beneficial to, to spirituality. Mm hmm. Uh, you know, for instance, I was looking, you know, Michael Todd a couple of years ago, he was really made fam famous for a uh, series that he did on like dating and, and, and courtship and marriage. I forgot what the name of it was. But as I was skimming through some of the videos, a lot of what he was saying was really powerful. A lot of it was really biblical. You know, so it's you know, it's it, and that's what must be understood is that not everything these men and women communicate is bad. Like, you'll know, take, for instance, as well, there's a lot of things that Joyce Meyer says that's really powerful. Joel Osteen, T.D. Jakes, um, a lot of things that they say that are very powerful, that 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 really speak to to our experiences. Like, for instance, we were talking about music, mm -hmm. whether you're talking about Hammond or Donnie McClurkin, McClurkin, even though because of the beats and, and, and the rhythms and the music and all that, it makes it bad. But especially when you just take a lot of the lyrics just for face value, a lot of the lyrics are really powerful. Some of these songs are genuinely talking about overcoming sin, mm -hmm. being close to Christ as you're going through difficult situations. Those are good biblical principles. And so because these, these biblical principles are being communicated it, it, it insinuates in the mind that because they're saying these few things that are really good, mm -hmm. that means that I can endorse everything that they advocate. And that's where the danger comes in. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I would say, especially someone listening to Michael Todd, uh, unfortunately, and the thing about it is, you know, there, there are many people who are, you know, not Adventists or, you know, of, of, you know, of our persuasion who are, you know, Sunday keepers who, who believe that Michael Todd is just a straight up false preacher. Um, because, you know, even though these Christians, you know, may not have an understanding of the truths that we understand as Sunday Adventists, they genuinely love the Lord. They genuinely want to follow biblical principles. Right. And so if I, you know, had a, you know, a friend who was in that position, I would just encourage them, you know, just, you know, communicate some of the things that we just mentioned and just say, like, you really need to look a little deeper. And also, generally, when I've seen people in these situations, it's because they really don't understand what it means to be a Seventh-day Adventist. Mm -hmm. And so as a result of that, they feel themselves being more greatly benefited by a Sunday minister as opposed to the three angels' messages. Right. 
Because at the end of the day, can can Michael Todd's sermons really compare to the grand truths that God has given to the remnant church? Hmm. I mean, can they really compare? And again, it's not to 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 discredit some of the really good things that he does communicate, some of the genuine feeding of the flock that he does do. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how good those messages are. Michael Todd does not know about the investigative judgment. Michael mm -hmm, Todd does mm -hmm, not mm -hmm. know about the duties of, of, the, of the Adventist home. Michael Todd does not know about righteousness by faith. Michael Todd does not uh, know about the beauties of the Sabbath. Michael Todd does not know about the beauties of modesty. I mean, and again, this is no defamation on, 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 on Michael. I mean, I would love to have an opportunity to sit down with him, you know, talk, have a you know conversation, you know, maybe have lunch together or something. But but sadly, uh, Michael, I mean, the way he presents himself, I mean, he presents himself like he's, you know, some of our viewers may be familiar with this. I mean, he presents himself like he's, you know, NBA young boy or, or he's, you know, Usher or Drake or something. I mean, he, he literally looks like a rapper when he's preaching. You know, he's. You know, he's got the braids going down, you know, like he, you know, like he just finished, you know, you know, parting, you know, my language, like he just finished smoking a blunt. Mm. You know, it's it's uh, it, it's crazy that we've gotten to a place where a minister of the gospel, professedly of the gospel, right. feels comfortable presenting themselves like that before God's people and dares to preach the word of God in that condition. Yeah, yeah. It is, it is, <laughs> this is where we are, brother. This is, this is where we are. So the second part of the question is, um, what can you do if you feel like you are not being spiritually fed at church? You don't connect with the pastor or what they preach about. They speak about yeah. the same thing over and over. So you go to church, but you feel like, you're not being fed. You're not getting the present truth. What would be your counsel to somebody like this, Brother Tucker? You know, um, the Apostle Paul, you know, when quoting, you know, one of the words of, of Christ, you know, said that it is more blessed to give than to receive. Mm -hmm. And especially when we're at church, our primary concern should be in being a blessing to others, mm -hmm. you know, seeking share with others the truths that we know in regards to present truth and things of that nature. That should be our objective. But at the same time, uh, it is true that when we go to church, we should be spiritually fed. Right. And unfortunately, especially because this is not happening in so many churches, it does present difficulties. Now, again, there's extremes. Right. You know, Especially if you are attending a church where there's a lot of this um, unconsecrated music, you know, there's a lot of influences that really tend to the degeneracy of your spirituality. And this is the blessing. We live in a day, a day and age of, you know, um, transportation. You know, by God's grace, you know, many of us have, have cars or even public transport. And especially with how prevalent things are, there's a variety of 70 Adventist churches to choose from. So, um, you know, the Lord always has, you know, faithful persons, um, you know, that are at different churches that you could possibly, you know, go and seek to find out. Um, uh, so, you know, that's definitely an option, you know, but as well, you know, I'll give an experience, you know, uh, because I've, you know, gone to, you know, attended many churches that, you know, were not, you know, the way that they should be, you know, but I sought to be a blessing there and, and stuff like that. And certainly if things get exasperated and, you know, you're really just not being fed. You know, you, you're especially if you're just coming into a knowledge of things and, and you really know that you're that you your soul really needs to be fed, you know, that, you know, in wisdom, like you really do need to uh, sit under a, a good spiritual teacher, you know, uh, of the word. I mean, this is why God has given us pastors and evangelists and teachers is to feed the flock of God. So, uh, you know, in, in really needing that. I would certainly, you know, pray, you know, by the grace of God, you know, seek out a church. Uh, hopefully there's, you know, a, a church in your local area that you could possibly mm -hmm. attend. And again, we have the blessings of social media, you know, and, and you know, many of, you know, my, you know, um, evangelism colleagues, you know, friends, you know, you know, we talk. Social media is like the new printing press. Mm -hmm. You know, you 
don't necessarily have to go through the intermediary of a local brick and mortar church in order to hear powerful truths of the word of God. And, uh, and that is definitely a blessing. But I, I will certainly say that uh, as far as possible, you want to be able to get the benefits of associating with other believers. Uh, and, and you should definitely pray on that. You know, mm -hmm. you should definitely pray on that so that you can get, get that benefit. Uh, because I know that some of us gen genuinely may be in exasperated situations. Say, you know, hypothetically, you know, you're not in an area where there's any, you know, church or whatever may have you. And you've you've exhausted things. You know what? God definitely understands that. But uh, but that's 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 the advice that I would I would give. Yes. Yes. Thank you. And, you know, just to add, um, this is a, a very important question. And I've come across a lot of people that have the same question. So I remember there was a time when we moved. Now, I'm not saying everybody has to do that, but we were driving like literally over an hour one way to go to church. I'm not saying everybody should do that. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm just giving an example. Yeah. Um, there may be options out there. And don't, also, don't forget, if you know the things that you're not getting because you say, you're not getting, you did not talking about the like kind of the things that we're talking about here. So you know the things that they're not presenting. That's a blessing that you know these things that you're not hearing. Maybe, maybe, just maybe, or God places you there for the purpose of sharing those things that you know and you're not hearing. Could be. It could be that God placed you there for a reason. So I would definitely pray about it. Um, but I wouldn't encourage you and say totally just stop going and just do online churches because you have to understand. Uh, when you come together with fellow believers, it has many benefits. Yes, you learn one from another. And the other aspect, and many of us miss that aspect of coming together is God places you among other people whom you may not like, whom may be different from you, whom may actually not like you. But yet God is saying, I still need you to love these people. That's character building. So No, it is. Yeah. You know, and even though know, just, you know, piggybacking off of that, I would say as well, um, another mechanism that God has given to us, you know, in order to get spiritually uplifted, even though it's not as frequent as, you know, going to church every week is camp meetings. Yes. You know, um, there's, you know, camp meetings. I'm pretty sure as well, uh, you as well, our brother Mark, you and your family, uh, camp meetings have been a great benefit yes. to my spirituality. Great, great benefit to my spirituality. So there's, there's a number of different camp meetings. You know, um, I mentioned as well, I used to work in Meet Ministry. Uh, Meet Ministry is a ministry down in Tennessee. They mm -hmm. have a camp meeting. There's um, another um, uh, camp meeting um, by um, a ministry called Red River. They're in uh, Kentucky. Uh, they're yes. about to have one. Um, there's another um, camp meeting called Upper Room. You know, they mm -hmm. uh, they have a camp meeting uh, annually. You really want to try to plug yourself uh, into uh, these opportunities to really be in environments that seek to be. And again, no place is perfect, but to right. try to be in an environment that that really seeks to overtly uh, be spiritual and work for the uh, development of the people there. You really want to take advantage of those opportunities. So I would really employ for those of us listening, really try to at least attend at least one of these camp meetings before the mm -hmm. year is over. Mm -hmm. And I second that. I second that, brother. Uh, yes. Camp meeting. They they have been a blessing to us, and uh, you'll be amazed uh, that the you know, the type of people that the type of contact that you get once you go exactly. to these places. All right, we have another question. Um, okay, so I guess a follow up to the same question that we were just answering. So the person said that uh, they. Uh, they talked to the pastor about this and 
they talk about how they felt that they're not getting the message for this time. They t- told the pastor, but the pastor said that the congregation may not like it. You, no, you, you see that? Yeah. yeah. No. Yeah. No. So um, what I would say um, in, in regards to that is uh, I, I've had the opportunity of, you know, to even be in association with pastors who say that they believe in present truth, uh, but who have told me privately that they don't uh, preach present truth from the pulpit actively because they want to keep their position in as a conference pastor. Mm. Um, they've even gone on to tell me that, you know, people like John the Baptist were actually unloving preachers, that John the Baptist, he preached too mm. hard. I mean, it's, I mean, tr- just cra- wow. crazy stuff. But, um, I mean, don't get me wrong. I- I- I've heard this, you know, before, even by, you know, ministers who are conscientious. And I, to a degree, I-, I can understand the position that they're in because, you know, these men, you know, depend upon these mechanisms and these structures for their livelihood. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, if you're not really governed by proper integrity, you will allow filthy lucre to keep you from being a faithful minister of the gospel. That's right. And so uh, a minister who is consulting the, the, the feelings uh, of his congregation, and, and I don't mean in, in, a, in a good sense, because, you know, we should always be mindful of the feelings of others, you know, because we don't want to be like rude or anything. Mm-hmm. But you're doing that to a point where you obscure the truth because you think it's going to offend somebody. I mean, at the end of the day, um, what's worse, a sinner being offended or a holy God being offended? Mm. I mean, because at the end of the day, yeah, and people will say, you know, well, only God can judge. Yes, that's true. But I mean, do you really want God judging you negatively? Mm. And so it's, you know, we say a lot of things that don't make sense. And this is a reference, you know, I would, you know, and I would say this in love, not to be, you know, attacking or arbitrary, but I would encourage that person who asks this question, go back to your pastor and in love, tell, encourage him to go and read. Uh, prophets and kings the chapter the voice of stern rebuke Mm. and in that chapter sister white explicitly says that it is not love for their fellow man that leads a minister to lower the standard of truth it's because that minister is a time server Mm. because he loves the 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 applause and 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 the and the uh, prestige and the praise of men is the reason why he is not faithful in his duties as a gospel minister. Wow. Wow. Praise the Lord. That is a powerful chapter, a voice of stern rebuke. Thank you. I hope that whoever's, uh, all of you watching this telecast, that you would go and read that chapter. It is found in Prophet and Kings. Okay. We have another question. Uh, my brother, how would you advise a small church that was formed as a result of a branch cyber school that has, that has had several talk with the local conference to be officially a part of the conference, but are being refused because the conference does not accept the small church stands against women's ordination. Is it only conference? And it is the only conference in the county, in that area. What the person says in the country. So I'm thinking this person may be watching us from overseas. So it's a situation where you have a small group, used to be a cyber school, now they want to become a church. They want to be, they want to work together with the conference. Well, the conference does yeah. not like the stance that that church has regarding women's ordination. No, yeah. Yeah. That's a tough one. Um, would you have any advice at all, uh, brother, you can uh, share with, uh, uh, with our dear sister? 
you, you know, it's it's very interesting. I don't know if any of our listeners have ever heard of a book called Ecclesiastical Empire by A.T. Jones. Um, the more I study history is, is the more I see one part of the reason why we kind of just accept things without questioning it. Mm. So I was listening. Um, I was I, I was actually going through it today and I was listening to um, going through a chapter called The Anarchy of the Papacy. This book is so powerful. And in that um, book, uh, in that particular chapter, it was going going over the experience of uh, Innocent the Third. Uh, Pope Innocent III, uh, mm -hmm. under the uh, rulership of Pope Innocent III, I know I'm giving a lot of information, but I'm going to get to a point. Mm -hmm. Pope Innocent III was the uh, Pope who inaugurated the Inquisition, um, who was under the uh, jurisdiction of a man by the name of St. Dominic, who was the founder of the Dominican Order. Now, the Inquisition, as they were trying to exterminate the Voudois out of France, mm -hmm. and I'm I believe that some of us may be familiar with the voudoir as they were trying to exterminate them uh there was a local um uh catholic church uh, and it's very interesting that these christians affected such a change in france that even many catholics were actually uh very kind and cordial with mm -hmm. the voudoir even they were not catholic their Christian influence was so prominent that those Catholics in that area, even though that they were um, denunciated by the Roman Catholic Church, the Catholics in that area did not want to follow the mandate of the papacy. Mm. Mm. So as a result of that, the papacy went into that territory and took away the power of the local parish mm. in order to exterminate the voudoir. You see, the don't get me wrong. God has ordained uh, order, yes. uh, and we all then you know the church was organized in 1863. We understand that, but this arbitrary rule from the top down that takes away the jurisdiction of the local congregation, especially when they're following biblical principles, that's a papal principle. It is that is not a biblical principle. That is a papal principle. But unfortunately, uh, because a lot of times persons don't understand this, we tend to, you know, just capitulate. Just accept it. You right. Know? Exactly. Exactly. We just capitulate. So, you know, if in that situation, it is a difficult, you know, uh, proposition. You know, certainly, you know, you want to be at peace, you know, as far as possible, you know, with the powers that be. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, understanding that. You know, just like what uh, First Elected Messages told us that, uh, sadly, there would be a new organization that would come in. And sadly, our church is under that new organization where uh, truth and righteousness is not the driving force, but a lot of times it's filthy lucre and the applause of men. So as a result of that, the personal That's sad. autonomy... That's very sad. It really is. It really is. So sadly, because the personal autonomy is not being respected... It's um, it's again, it's a difficult situation. I know of a church, you know, uh, where the um, they 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 just have a, a pastor who is a liaison, you know, with mm -hmm. the conference. You know, they don't really necessarily have a lot of jurisdiction necessarily over the church, but the church is run by elders, you know. Uh, and you know, it's a very interesting uh, uh, passage of scripture. This is in Titus. This is in Titus chapter one. Titus chapter one and verse five. Notice what the Bible says. This is uh, the apostle uh, Paul. This says, for this cause left I thee in Crete, that thou shouldest set in order the things that are wanting and ordain elders in every city as I had appointed thee. Generally speaking, the church was to be run by these elders who had experience. They had, um, you know, a, a spiritual experience with the Lord who could help to give jurisdiction over that territory so that the minister actually could go out and win souls and do all of those things. You know, sorts of things. But as far as the church in this situation, I mean, it, it's really just as far as, as standing your ground, you know, just, you know, letting them know that, you know, we want to, you know, um, you know, do what is proper, you know, by the Lord. But, you know, we, we just can't um, ordain or sanction those things. And at the end of the day, you know, God is, is, is at the head of the ship. You know, the Jewish nation was in insane amounts of apostasy, you know, when Jesus came to the earth the first time. 
And, you know, if God was, you know, still able to do things at that time, he can still do things at that time. I Amen. mean, at this time as well. But at the same time, you know, I was reminded of a statement um, that was brought out last week when we were at State Line, and it was being made mention that, especially in, in this time that we live in, that we should not really e expect a lot of justice in this yes. day and age. Yes. And sadly, even persons in positions of spiritual responsibility are not going to act with justice and due diligence. So, you know, dear, you know, friend, brother, sister, who is ever asking that question, I don't know necessarily how that situation is going to go. But at the end of the day, just like uh, every person that has been faithful to God through the centuries, if you are faithful to the word of God, then the Lord will guide you as to what steps you ought to take. That's right. That's right. That's right, brother. Thank you very much. You see, saints, as once we want to become faithful to God, we want to follow God. Yes, you will have this kind of situation come up where you will be placed in a straight position. Um, you'll be taken advantage of. These things will happen. These things will happen. You know, it is the it is the object of the devil to split the church, to bring in division and all kinds of things. So, brothers and sisters, listen. Stay faithful. Don't compromise. Listen, if you have to continue to stay a Sabbath school, continue to preach God's word. Listen, if this is how it's going to go, you know, continue to do what you do. But understanding the more faithful we are to God as we near in the end. We're not going to have any justice, saints. We're not going to have any justice. So we pray that uh, the Lord will clearly um, show you folks exactly what to do. All right. So I know we overtime, saints, but there are two more things that we want to touch. You probably can uh, talk a little bit about them. You did touch them um, a little bit during your presentation is television the effect of television in the home what we're watching what we're giving our children okay and also public schools the things that they are learning how can that or can that can these things be a reason why they are leaving the church the things that they're watching being entertained by the hollywood or the things that they now are learning and the schools so talk a, a little bit about this before we end brother no yes so um especially when it comes to you know to television again you know we talked about entertainment so all entertainment is not you know is wrong it just depends on what type of entertainment it is so in the past you know when when reading was primarily the form of entertainment when there was no television generally at the end of every day or say at the end of every week when the family could come together, you know, Christian, especially Christian families, uh, they would come together and they would read some type of volume that was uplifting, mm -hmm. you know, and and, and uh, the book may, might not have necessarily been like overtly spiritual, but it was something that was productive for the mind. And so uh, that was the entertainment that the family enjoyed. I mean, part of the reason why we find it necessary to, you know, to watch Avengers or to watch you know christian entertainment you know they have something called pure flicks which is supposed to be you know the christian version of netflix mm. but it's still drama you know <laughs> you know so um but part of the reason why we find these things so necessary is because we no longer properly know how to socialize so proper socialization between humans was to be the entertainment that was enjoyed by intelligent beings mm -hmm. So when we get to heaven, our entertainment is going to be socializing with the angels, socializing with the Godhead, socializing with the unfallen worlds, socializing with the animals, spending time in nature. Uh, that's going to be our entertainment. Right. We're going to derive genuine pleasure from these activities. Um, but again, because of what we have considered to be entertainment, it's just like, for instance, when we think of sports, the spirit of prophecy uses the term sports. Sports does not necessarily always designate, you know, football 
or or American football or or you know basketball or cricket or baseball or whatever may have you mm -hmm. you know is you know what a person is engaging in essentially for recreation or whatever may have you and so our mind in regards to entertainment needs to take a shift you know and so it's you know I've, I've heard it and i'm pretty sure some of us have you know, might have heard this before that you know entertainment you know it stands for you know enter you know into uh attainment you know that which is you know entering into you and again you know we highlighted education everything that we do is a form of education and education is nothing more than character development so mm -hmm. when we're watching television we're being educated yes so when we're watching television and and we see you know the 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 commercial with the with the with the lesbian couple or the drag queen you know um um reading to the little children we're being slowly educated to accept this as normal mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. when we're watching the television and whether we're watching sports or we're watching you know the avengers whatever may have you we're being educated into thinking that strife and contention is to be a normal part of life. Taking revenge mm -hmm. on your neighbor is a part of life. Being spiteful and jealous is a natural part of life. You know, um, I don't know if some of our listeners may be familiar with a particular case. Um, a couple, uh, I think about a couple weeks ago now, um, March Madness for college basketball was taking place and the women's college basketball tournament was actually the most popular. It was actually even more popular than the men's tournament. And in the championship game, uh, it was the schools of uh, LSU and Iowa that were playing. And one of the LSU players was taunting the Iowa players and the Iowa players, she was taunting as well. And some people got offended by this, whatever may have you, but a lot of people were defending this as this is natural sportsmanship and mm. the natural trash talk that is supposed to take place in, and mind you they say this is supposed to take place mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you're supposed to trash talk in sports you're supposed to present yourself as better than your opponent and talk down on your opponent and all these things and again we think that this is normal but does heaven interact like that mm. does gabriel interact like that does Christ interact like that? And, you know, again, some of us may have never heard this before. Right. I remember when I first heard these concepts in regards to sports, I was like, what? That's crazy. You know, you mean to tell me that I'm practicing deception, you know, when I'm doing all these different type of things. But yes. Yes, you are. Again, out, we've become so spiritually blind that we can't even discern the spiritual ramifications of the activities we participate in. Uh, so that's on that point. So again, now mind you, it's not to say that there are not programs on television that are not beneficial. I believe that we all can understand that there are documentaries and things that we can watch that, that are yes, a profit. Even social media, we have to be careful of these phones. How many times do we spend time scrolling through, you know, Instagram or, or Facebook or whatever may have you? And again, we may not even necessarily be watching things that are bad, but we're wasting time. We're not being productive. We're, we're, you know, procrastinating on our responsibilities. So, you know, all of these things have to be taken into consideration. But um, let's turn in our Bible to the book of Isaiah, uh, just to highlight the point of education. Let's yes. turn to Isaiah. Let's turn to Isaiah chapter 54. Isaiah chapter 54. Um. And we're going to read in Isaiah chapter 54 in verse 13. The Bible says in verse 13 of Isaiah 54, and all thy children shall be taught of the Lord and great shall be the peace of thy children. In righteousness shalt thou be established. Thou shalt be far from oppression for thou shalt not fear and from terror for it shall not come near thee. God has ordained that our children are to be taught of the Lord. Now, again, a lot of us don't understand what is actu what, what actually comprises Christian education. Because, again, I attended a place called Oakwood, and I'm pretty sure some of us 
have attended, you know, maybe some form of Christian, quote unquote, Christian schooling. But Christian schooling does not mean that you teach a worldly curriculum, but you just pray before class. That's not Christian. That's not a that's not Christian education. No. You see, uh, there's again, there's a very powerful book I would recommend, um, especially for our parents. There's there's a it, it's called um, The Place of the Bible in Education by A.T. Jones. In that book, he outline, outlines in clear detail that the Bible is literally to be the basis of every subject taught. Whether that subject is chemistry, biology, physics, math, it doesn't matter what branch of education, the Bible is to be the foundation. I say this with sadness. You would be, I mean, excruciatingly hard pressed to find a mainstream Christian school mm -hmm. that biology from the Bible, that teaches math from the Bible that teaches history from the Bible, you would be excruciatingly hard pressed to find conventional Christian schooling following this processes. This is why hmm. genuinely, unless you can find, I mean, genuine Christian schooling, and there are some are options. Yes. You know, no place is perfect. There are some good, some good options, but especially if you have little ones, the best option that you have is homeschooling your children. Amen, brother. Especially if you have the luxury of having a mother, if, you know, if you're a husband, if you have a wife, if you're a wife, you have your husband. I know that some of us may be single parents, so we don't have the luxury of having a spouse. Yeah. You know, uh, but even in those situations, God can still work some miracles for us. And so I would say strongly, because again, and we, we mention this all the time. Public schooling or even sending your children off to school is a new phenomenon. Yes, there's always been colleges, you know, dating back to antiquity, whether you go back to the Middle Ages, whether you go back, you know, to Africa you know, or, or Greece or Rome. Every civilization has always had a higher form of education. But primarily from the cradle, I, I guess, till about maybe 1820, whenever that threshold was in, in this in those civilizations, all of these civilizations practiced home schooling. Sending your child off to school at the age of three, four, and five is a modern phenomenon. It is a modern phenomenon. Homeschooling has always been the norm in Amen. every culture. Yes. It's always been the norm. But sadly, especially those of us living in, in the West, and you and you don't have to be living in America to be in the West, whether you're in you know Western Europe or Australia or whatever the case may be, we've been educated to believe that homeschooling is somehow taboo and strange, but it's not. Yeah. Our Lord and Savior, who we profess to believe in, was homeschooled. Yes. And the last time I checked, Jesus did not have a problem with his intellectual ability. That's so right. again, you want to homeschool your children as far as possible. There's curriculums. I'm pretty sure some of us have heard of something called sunlight education. I know there's mm -hmm. others, you know, that can be recommended. Um, I'm pretty sure uh, you, Mark, you know, especially, you know, with your children, I'm pretty sure there's some, you know, things as well that you can, you know, communicate. But yeah, but again especially in these last days if we're really going to practice child guidance in adventist home especially it is it's a little different when you have you know maybe teenagers who are 15 16 17 but especially if you have children between the ages of infancy and 10 years old mm -hmm. who need they need to be in the home with yes, you sir. yes sir they need to be in the home with you yes there's there's no going around this this is that's what it is saints i'm telling you the those first years of the child's life they have to be in the home saints the idea that you have your child and then a few weeks later you send them to uh, a, a daycare that somebody else saints saints no no saints no all right i think we definitely have gone over time 
Mm-hmm. Um, we we have to close, unfortunately, Saints. We have to close. I think there may be some more questions. Um, somebody was asking about the name of the book, but I think somebody that the book that you mentioned by A.T. Jones, but I think somebody uh, gave that name the the place of the Bible and education. Um, yes. So thank you, thank you for that, Saints. Um, somebody did mention. I'm not sure if you're familiar with predictive programming is it something you're aware of that term at all brother yeah yeah somebody wanted to they did mention you kind of touch it briefly um i guess uh they wanted to you to say a word or two on that uh, yeah. uh before we close no yes i mean predictive programming it really comes under the umbrella of something called social engineering so I don't know if any of us are familiar with that concept of social engineering, but uh, there was a book uh, written by a man by the name of Edward Bernays, uh, who wrote a book called Propaganda. Edward Bernays was the uh, was the nephew of a gentleman by the name of Sigmund Freud, who is essentially, I, to some degree, considered the you know the the father of modern psychology. But uh, Sig, uh, but um, uh, Edward Bernays, that book Propaganda, it outlined the principles of how the human mind uh, can be manipulated. He also wrote a book called Crystallizing uh, Public Opinion. So especially with, um, say, you know, movies, like for instance, uh, for those of us, uh, you can actually go on our channel. The last video that we posted mm-hmm. uh, was called uh, The Vatican's Aliens. Yes. The Vatican's Aliens. And in that particular study, we actually outline where, and mind you, these are modern outlets. These are not conspiracy theory, you know, uh, program uh, outlets or whatever. These mainstream outlets like NBC tell us that movies for decades have been preparing our mind for the coming uh, uh, revelation of aliens. This is what these modern outlets say, that these movies, Mm. whether they be the Avengers or Independence Day or any of these, you know, big blockbuster movies, that they have been embedding into our mind to prepare for this coming revelation, ultimately, when Satan personates Christ. I'll give an example. In 1998, there was a book, there was a movie that came out called uh, Under Siege. I believe that was the name of it. It was a movie with uh, Bruce Willis and uh, Denzel Washington. In this movie, um, it was the premise of the movie was that there was a terrorist attack in New York City that was carried out by extremist jihadist Muslims. And that in order to combat the effect of the terrorism, Uh, New York City had to be put under martial law in order to um, in order to combat the terrorism and the principles of the Bill of Rights in the Constitution had to be revoked in order to deal with the terrorism. Many people consider this movie prophetic because literally in a few short years, in just three years, in 2001, that very same event took place on 9-11. And very soon after that, the Patriot Act was enacted by Congress that essentially completely did away with the Constitution. Wow. Wow. So programming is is very uh, true. And this is why we have to be very careful of the media that we're ingesting, because, again, it at the ultimately it's Satan that is giving uh, men the the wisdom to put these things into entertainment in order to control our minds and again think about this think about this friends the reason why it was so difficult for the disciples to understand the lessons of christ is because they had been literally programmed from their babyhood to reject the spiritual teachings of the bible Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, even mm -hmm. though the bible in its in its technical aspects they were educated from their sip from their infancy to reject the spirituality of the bible while professing to follow the letter of the law yes 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 brother oh saints you notice if you and i were not in our on our knees presenting our children to god daily we're in trouble saints 
we in trouble so saints that's a lot of information i know uh, brother samuel has a whole lot more information on his channel and you'll notice we have posted a link in the uh youtube chat we have posted a link to uh his channel we would highly highly encourage you to go and and, and subscribe and uh you'll see you'll be blessed because i know i have been blessed by watching his presentation so you will be blessed go uh, to his channel and subscribe and watch some of these videos that he's talking about most of these things he's talking about here tonight they are at length on his channel so you'll see more information more documentation so i would highly highly encourage you to go saints and um uh, uh oh. check it out yes brother yeah just a quick plug in you know and we always say this um especially if you are being benefited by the material please financially support you know not yes. only our ministry you know what brother mark and his family are doing and we encourage with other ministries as well that you're being blessed by because truly you know what i know what what uh with what brother mark is doing with what we're doing you know we're not um grandiose ministries you no. know, we're not you know amazing facts or whatever may have you that have large outlays of means so truly um as you all feel impressed you know to give um, and things of that nature it literally gives us the ability to do this work literally yes. literally yes. gives us the ability to do this work that that is that is true that is true saints um uh, please do so um uh, go and if 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 brother samuel if um um somebody wanted to uh, uh support financially uh your ministry what, what's the what are the ways that they can do so yeah so we we really try to make it as easy as possible so we have cash app paypal venmo mm -hmm. um zell uh the whole nine so at the end of all of our videos we have where you can uh donate and also on our website, uh, when you go on our website and you click the donate tab, it'll give you the list of the different uh, ways and means by which you can by which you can donate. And what what is your website? Yeah, so it's gladtidings3am.org. Gladtidings3am.org. All right. So it's www.gladtidings3am.org. So saints, it's in the chat. Go support the ministry because I'm telling you, those uh, uh, it takes a lot to be able to do these presentations. So yeah, really, I really would really highly, does. yes, highly encourage you folks. If you feel you've been blessed by this, that you would go on our brother, Brother Samuel's ministry page, support them financially. Again, go to YouTube. At the end of every of the videos that they have they have all kinds of ways that you can support and i i believe you will be blessed if you do that now the bible says those who water others will be watered themselves so saints we want to definitely encourage you uh to 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 do that um and if you do want to support us too, out of the cities ministries, many ways you can do that. Just go to uh, out of the cities that US, and then you have all all the ways that you can support us. So saints, we want to thank you so much. You notice we've gone over time. We realize that, but we also know this is important stuff, saints. Amen. This is Amen. crucial. Amen. This is very important. And brother Samuel. Thank you so much Praise for blessing the community. Thank you so much. And give my thanks also to the wife. You know, we really appreciate um, the work um, that you folks are doing. We praise God for it. Saints, if you were blessed, don't forget to share. Don't forget to uh, go to our brother's YouTube page, watch the videos and share them and like them, subscribe support them financially i know it will be a blessing to them so uh brother samuel we're going to finish uh i'm gonna ask you if if you don't mind to close us out 
close us out yeah. with a prayer amen oh and also as well i would just even just give another quick plug in so mm -hmm. uh as we all especially those who are watching this you know whether it be us or out of the city's ministries or other ministries please share uh these 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 uh sit downs you know the the sermons yes. please share them with others you know and especially on our channel we really try to create content that um is is applicable for everyone you know not just yes. us as you know but messages that can appeal to people who don't know this message uh you know people you know who can be blessed by you know um a variety of different means so we really encourage that as well that's right that's right and yes very very important sense i highly recommend you to go on glad tidings 3 a.m youtube page go on there you will be blessed thank you everyone let us um finish up with uh with a word of prayer All right, let's pray dear father in heaven lord we thank you so much for this evening of, of fellowship lord even though we've gone over time the lord it's we have experienced your spirit your presence lord because what better way to spend on these sacred hours than opening up the scriptures and being uh, encouraged in this most holy faith I pray that you be with everything that is communicated, Lord. We know, as the words of W.W. Prescott, it's it's one thing to say amen to the word of God, but to actually practice the truth is a whole nother matter. So I just pray that you would help us to practice these things, be with us as individuals, be with us as, as a husbands, wives, children. doesn't matter what our circumstance is, if we're single parents, uh, whatever that, uh, the case may be. Lord, we know that as the Bible says in Psalms, that God said it, the solitary in families, you have a special place for each and every one of us. And I just pray that you may reveal that to us. Uh, be with all those who have watched and those who will watch in the future. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Saints, oh, we thank you very much. Thank you for watching. Brother Samuel, again, thank you uh, for allowing... Um, uh, the Lord to use you in such a powerful way to be a blessing, to be an absolute blessing to God's people tonight. Saints, everybody that was watching, we thank you. With Samuel, happy Sabbath. Thank you, everyone. We'll see you again, God willing, next Friday for another presentation. But I'm going to assure you that I was blessed myself by this presentation and we'll work with brother samuel to see if we can bring him back again well, i know the community will love that thank you brother samuel thank you everyone for watching have a good night happy sabbath we'll see you again god willing next week goodbye god bless happy sabbath